You've enjoyed your fair share of Cave 2, but you are craving just a little more. Each class and weapon is unique and entertaining, but using the same deading devices over and over again is starting to get a little old. Lucky for you, we have a whole barracks more. So hand over your pallets of cash and let's get into the DLC weapons. The Battleaxe and MKB-42H Carbine Rifle get an honorable mention for being event drops that you can access through the weapon share mechanic. Yes, I know I mistakenly covered the Battleaxe during the Berserker video, but I was blinded by the fact that it's COOL AS fuck. Also, a quick shout out to the Zweihander and Road Redeemer. They are just little fun crossovers from Chivalry and... Road Redeemer. They don't do anything special and are a part of the weapon share mechanic as well. Anyway... Oh no! Oh no! To start off this mechanical marathon is the Bloodsickle. Do you wish to hack and slash through your enemies like a butcher with a cleaver, or would you rather harvest torsos like fields of wheat? Collapsing the blade inward increases your attack speed at the cost of your range. Conversely, extending your blade increases your range while decreasing your attack speed. In both configurations, right-clicking will do two attacks in quick succession instead of a singular heavy attack. On top of that, you can nudge people backwards with your quick melee. But you're gonna want a little more pushback than that. So I present to you the Ion Thruster. This store brand lightsaber couldn't figure out the plasma part of its design, so it settled on just being pumped full of fire. Smacking people with this infernal baton will set them ablaze. But that's not the fun part. After successfully bludgeoning a stadium's worth of Zeds, the cool gauge in the bottom will eventually reach 100%. Once at critical amounts of epic, you can attempt to reload your fire sword. Doing so will unleash a powerful attack that will nudge Zeds a tiny bit better than the Bloodsicle. I'm doing my part. I'm doing my part. I'm doing my part, too. <laughs> Everyone knows how Dog is man's best friend, but what is man Doe's best friend? Let me introduce you to the Sentinel. He may not have innocent eyes or soft fur, but their 556 automated turret and belly full of C4 will make even the toughest of commandos beg for his company. Deploying the Sentinel will make him hover in a fixed location, crocheting bullets into the skin of anything he doesn't like. If he eventually runs out of free lead samples to hand out, the Sentinel will cower in shame and self-destruct, blasting anything nearby with serrated drone shrapnel. And if a situation arises where your position is overrun, or you are just disappointed in Senti, you can right-click to increase his use and decrease his resale value. And before you ask, no, you cannot have more than one. Next is a brief return to normalcy, the FAMAS Master Key. The AR itself fires exclusively in burst, but attached to it is a pump-action underbarrel. Using Middle Mouse will introduce your enemies to the secret in the most lethal of ways. And despite the fact that the M26 underbarrel is pump action, you can hold down Middle Mouse to continue firing, making it full auto from a mechanical standpoint. And rounding out the commando list is the minigun. Do you want to forcibly evict organs from their bodies in the most efficient way possible? Then hand over an extremely modest two grand and let's get started. We ripped this bad boy off of the nearest armored personnel carrier, and your noodly arms are somehow strong enough to hold it in one hand. But don't let its size fool you. This is a delicate piece of equipment. You need to make sure that it is nice and ready before you perform your record-breaking bullet repositioning. It takes 0.7 seconds to wind up your barrel, even though the flavor text says 1.5. Once spun up, you will dispense ammo faster than a Bass Pro Shop in Texas. And if a constant stream of lead is not precise enough for you, you can hold down right-click to keep the barrel rolling. Doing so will make you walk about as fast as a three-legged tortoise, but you can fire whenever you want, preventing gaps in your onslaught. I got 57 more goddamn rounds in this four-round magazine. Unfortunately, support only has one DLC weapon. At least it's pretty cool. <laughs> the Frostfang is an axe with a gun in it. Or a gun with an axe on it. It deads things all the same, so who cares? Utilizing the gun portion of this weapon causes it to sling frozen buckshot at people. These shards do heavy frost damage and can turn big boys into big ice sculptures. And if you want to use all the buttons at your disposal, or just ran out of ammo, you can melee these statues with your axe's increased damage to frozen enemies. Another thing worth noting about the fang half of the frost fang. If you'd rather not have your eyes clawed out, you can block. That makes the frost fang one of the only weapons that can block. By the way, mechanically, the Frostfang is considered a melee weapon, so weird things can happen, like a super-speeded survivalist wielding a shotgun axe. Just remember to stay frosty. <laughs> anyway, that's how I lost my medical license. 
<laughs> You'd have thought that we've reached the limit on ways to heal people, but even Field Medic has a few wacky weapons for purchase, starting with the Mine Reconstructor. Instead of healing and hurting with bullets and syringes, you opt for maximum multitasking by doing both with your primary fire. You lob piles of hazardous sludge at your targets. Charging up your shot will kill Zeds and heal allies more intensely. And if you want to prepare for a siege or an emergency room relocation, you can throw your goop onto the ground for safekeeping. Yes, specifically on the ground. Friends and foes can dip their toes into your goo mines before popping them like zits and showering anything nearby in your blue goodness. And if you are too impatient for something to wander into your traps, you can use Middle Mouse to detonate your mines preemptively. By the way, the mines do some microwave damage in addition to the standard poison. I guess these piles of volatile sludge are radioactive? Maybe it's a good thing you can't heal yourself with them. The Mine Reconstructor can only have up to 12 mines active at once, but unlike C4, it is limited by instance of weapon and not a server cap, so you can summon some backup and carpet the floor. Or if you're a little eccentric, you can just buy multiple Mine Reconstructors and discard them when you reach the cap. Sadly, they only last for 5 minutes, but I doubt that's going to be too big of an issue. And if you are searching for more complexity, then look no further. With the Corruptor Carbine, you are incentivized to kill in order to heal. Your alt fire can heal players, yes, but the real healing comes from using it on Zeds. Firing your syringe at a Zed will fill their veins with the lovely healing juice you all crave so much. If your target dies while this process is in effect, they will explode like a pinata of healing gas. The initial explosion deals damage to nearby Zeds and leaves a lingering healing cloud that only affects allies. And if you're wondering how exactly you're going to pop these people, the weapon as a whole is a bolt-action sniper rifle. One wayward pinch of potassium chloride, one errant twitch, and Let's take a few steps back and just enjoy a classic. The Blunderbuss. Uh, well, this is a little more sci-fi than I was expecting. Alright, make that a lot more sci-fi. Actually, this isn't what I was expecting at all. The Blunderbuss is a mag-loaded mine launcher. The miniature depth charges that you fire can explode on impact. But if you have some form of plan for that projectile, you can continue to hold down the trigger to prevent it from exploding immediately. Just be mindful that it will continue to travel for a bit while it's disarmed. I have no idea why this is called a blunderbuss. Oh, it's all fire as a shotgun. We're good. Next is the gravity imploder. Which, I must say, good luck seeing what you're doing with this weapon. Your primary fire causes an implosion that covers 80% of your screen with its bright yellow radius. And although it's called an implosion, it does not pull in Zeds. Oh Hans, what's going on? Oh, he's fine. He's good. It does pull in giblets though, so you can make boulders of limbs and roll them around like the meatball from inside. I have a pile of rioters. They are all very much dead. Though, this weapon can create a true implosion. Using Middle Mouse fires a miniature black hole to suck in enemies. But despite its flashy behavior, it only does... <clears throat> one damage. This vortex is more for positioning and not DPS. And what better way to track those new positions than a radar? With the ZMK3, you have an additional tool at your disposal. Just below your eyeline stands a radar that tracks the position of any nearby hostiles. Not the most useful thing in the game, but maybe it will save you from a sneak attack. Ah! But we haven't even gotten to the killing mechanics of the MK3. You fire a barrage of lightning balls at your enemies. But that isn't very demolitionist of you now, is it? I'm not feeling too great. Mixed in with your electricity are homing rockets that are fired out after every six shots. This gives you a weird mix of single target and splash damage in the same instance of fire. Just make sure you don't tap fire if you want to actually use this mechanic. The counter resets if you stop shooting, so you won't fire any missiles if you feather the trigger. That has got to be the gayest jacket I've ever seen. Firebug tragically only has one DLC weapon as well. The Thermite Bore. Um... Uh... It's literally just the seal squeal but fire. Good job, Tripwire, you managed to get your HRG and DLC files mixed up. Anyway, you shoot spears at people and wait for them to detonate. If you can't wait for the results, you can force them to burst with your mind powers. The explosions caused will spawn fire and make anything still alive have a generally unpleasant time. Hi, I'm Derek Bum! <laughs>
I have no quarrels with Gunslinger, but their gameplay can be a little repetitive from time to time. There are only so many ways that you can put a 45 through someone's eyes. Leave it to the DLC weapons to give your slaying some diversity. To start off, we have the Rhinos. Unlike standard revolvers, the Rhinos shoot from the bottom of the cylinder instead of the top. This is to help with recoil and overall control of the gun. But that's just for its real-life counterpart. In KF2, the Rhinos fire fragmentation rounds. These bullets break apart on impact and can hit enemies behind your target. But that isn't the only brand of penetration GS is getting. With the Piranha Pistols, you fire saw blades in a similar fashion to the Berserker's Eviscerator. Speaking of Berserker, on the wiki, the primary class for the Piranha Pistols is Berserker. But in the Trader Pod, it is Gunslinger? For simplicity, I'm just going to pretend that the shop is correct. At first glance, you can assume that the saws will bounce and that the general Grievous Ears taped to the side will make your melee stronger. But what you may have missed is that you can block with these pistols. And just to add attention to detail, blocking with both pistols is slightly better than blocking with one. Though, unlike the Frost Fang, these pistols are not considered melee weapons, so certain semantic key things don't happen, like the bonus speed on Servi. Finishing off the Gunslinger's list is the Glock 18Cs. Instead of dealing with the high damage single shot power of standard GS weapons, you've decided it would be far more entertaining to dual wield fully automatic suppressed Glocks with extended magazines. Straddling the line between pistols and submachine guns, having a Glock in each hand brings your fire rate up to the cap, making your bullets per minute on par with the likes of the Chris SMG and the minigun. And unlike all the other instances of akimbo weaponry, you do something unique when you are lacking your full set. Wielding one Glock gives you the option to switch to semi-auto. Just be aware that giving your pistol a partner will remove this option and keep you in full auto. Uh, sir, can we talk about Sergeant Pugsley for a minute, please? That damn maverick. Oh boy, oh boy, it's time for the long-range bonanza. Starting off with the Mosin-Nagant. My favorite of the sharpshooter weapons, this carefully crafted combination of wood and steel can atomize craniums with extreme efficiency. Though, if aiming is too much of a complicated concept for you, you can jam your bayonet into the face of anything in front of you to help usher your bullets past their cheekbones. The bayonet itself benefits from sharpshooter skills instead of berserker, making it one of the few ranged weapons with scaling melee viability. On top of that, you can block with the Mosin, reinforcing the fact that it is an outlier among ranged and melee weapons. Speaking of outliers, let's talk about the HV Storm Cannon. This sci-fi rifle substitutes its lead for lightning. Much like all the other electricity-based damage sources, this can inflict the EMP status effect. But that isn't all it can do. Landing a headshot will cause lightning to chain from the wound, whether they die or not. This can hit up to three additional Zeds with 25% less damage per bounce. And that isn't the only AoE at Sharpshooter's disposal. With a compound bow, you can take the standard approach of shooting a normal arrow, or you can conjure ice around the tip and granted explosive capabilities. The standard arrow does standard arrow things like spinning skulls in half, but the ice arrow bursts on impact, causing freeze damage to affect all surrounding zeds. The compound bow also has a bayonet, similar to the Mosin Nagan. Although it doesn't have as much base damage as the Mosin's bayonet, the compound bow still benefits from the sharpshooter perk list instead of berserkers. Have you gotten bored of being restricted to SMGs? Maybe you want to spice up your life with a little bit of variation. Well, do I have some good news for you. Your DLC weapons aren't actually SMGs, more just guns that shoot really fast. The starting example being the Riot Shield and Glock 18. Not to be confused with the Glock 18C. If you couldn't tell by the long-range dismemberment, your pistol fires in full auto. And despite SWAT's love for bullet hosing, you can use Middle Mouse to set it to semi-auto instead. The reload isn't exactly terrible, but if you find yourself in a dire situation, you can cancel your reload by pulling up your shield. You may be a little bewildered as to why I am mentioning this, but it occurs to me that this is the one weapon in the game where aiming down sights will cancel your reload. I've never actively noticed this being a feature, or lack thereof, so I figured it was worth shedding some light on. Speaking of the shield, while you are cowering behind it, your damage from frontal attacks is reduced by 60%. And we are all aware that riot shields can be a crowd controller on top of defense. Using your extra special quick melee, you can hit multiple targets and shove backwards small crowds. Additionally, the shield bash has damage scaling with SWAT damage and not berserkers. Hmm. Noticing a trend here. But you might not want takiness and improved melees. Maybe the only defense you want to deal with is the removal of others. With the G36C assault rifle, this dream will become a reality. 
Stolen out of the commandos lost and found, the G36C is a kitted out assault rifle, accompanied by full auto, semi auto, suppression, laser sights, and even a folding grip for your convenience. But enough about the sales pitch, the real magic comes from what lies within that tactical magazine. The G36C is the proud owner of the only armor piercing rounds in the game. I know we've covered penetration before, but these are true AP rounds. Upon colliding with armor, the bullets will do 80% of their damage directly to the health of their victim. The additional 20% hits the armor and is multiplied by how much it hates whatever you're shooting at, and essentially creates free damage. This effect liquefies armor so fast that I had a hard time capturing it on footage because I kept accidentally blowing up rioters. This is a fairly simple weapon, but having the option to circumnavigate one of the biggest buffers in the game makes the G36C something truly special. Look at you, a little tiny toilet for a little tiny baby to- ah! Yes, to your dismay, even Servi gets a weapon. With the Reducto Ray, you can kill Zeds by adjusting their hit points to zero like every other weapon, but you also have the capability to Reducto bodies so much that their organs cannot fit within their respective flesh suits any longer. It's worth noting that because the Reducto Ray is considered a DOT weapon without any damage over time, you can only trigger Zed time on a kill. To add to your woe, you cannot shrink bosses past their critical volume, but you can still make them really tiny. Yeah, bet you didn't know this was a thing. The mysterious 11th tab with the bloated survivalist icon, filled to the brim with weapons that can be wielded by all. Like the dual 9 mils. And the Dashin gun. Dosh ein gun? Do shine gun? I have no clue. The Dosh gun doesn't fire lead, lightning, or any other type of projectile we've covered. Instead, it launches cold hard cash. <laughs> You don't buy bullets, you just grab the dosh in your wallet and chuck it at the enemy. And before you chalk this up as a waste of time, the money you fire can be picked up and doesn't lose value despite the brain matter now attached to it. You can flaunt your riches in either fully or semi-auto, and your fat stacks do a hearty amount of CC. But if you want to put commoners in their place with your own hands, you can always slap them across the face with a wad of cash. And there you have it! Every weapon in KF2 as of 2022... Wait a minute... I almost forgot! The release of the HRG Ballistic Bouncer and HRG Medic Missile managed to evade my upload schedule. I'll just cover them now right quick. The HRG Ballistic Bouncer fires bouncy balls of changeable sizes. The high CC capabilities of this weapon do not change with your charge level, but the damage, velocity, and amount of bounces do. Oh, and if you can't figure out whose weapon this is, it's for support. Yeah, I don't get it either. But what isn't hard to decipher is the HRG Medic Missile. This rocket launcher fires missiles that create an explosion of healing. Despite appearances, the explosion doesn't leave a healing cloud, and thus will only heal or kill if something is within the blast radius. This weapon also inherits a few mechanics from the RPG-7. Both weapons can kill things behind you due to the backblast of firing a rocket from over your shoulder, and if the rocket hits a scrake without exploding, it will do 300% impact damage. I don't know how an unexploded missile will do more damage to one of the strongest enemies in the game, but who cares, it's funny. Anyway. DRG soon and Payday 2 will be added to the next poll. Okay, bye.